This is Mythbusters, Regional Anesthesia Edition. In this episode, we're going to look at a common practice in regional, mixing two local anesthetics to leverage the pharmacodynamic advantages of both. Does it actually work? We aim to find out today. Let's dig in. The premise we're examining is this. For fast onset and long duration, mix two differing local anesthetics. Now you may ask, why is this a discussion point? Well, for one, it is a common practice, and the fact that it takes time to do suggests that it's worth it. But mostly it has to do with competing pressures. We all want our blocks to work quickly and allow the procedure to crack on. Always awkward when the surgeon is staring at me over the drape asking, are we there yet? Are we there yet? So commonly used short or intermediate acting agents like chlorprocaine or lidocaine are good for that. They're speedy. The problem is they have no stamina. They're like sprinters. And so while the patient looks great in the PACU with a numb arm, she's crying six hours later when it wears off. So what about our longer acting agents? Bupivacaine and ropivacaine are the most common, and there are marathoners. They take a while to get going, but man, they've got endurance. Score one for the patient. The downside is that you may be waiting a while for it to work, at least in theory. Wouldn't it be great to have an agent that had speed and stamina, like a soccer player or hockey or rugby? Okay, you know what? Just choose whatever sports analogy you want. The point is, mixing these two locals is thought to provide the best of both worlds, keeping surgeon, patient, and you happy. And remember, we have several goals that help us decide when choosing local anesthetics. Keeping the operating room moving is one, but also important is minimizing toxicity potential and unwanted side effects. Not everyone needs a long block. It's important to match the analgesia to the pain burden. And obviously, we don't want to commit any preventable drug errors. Well, how do we test this myth? Well, we do have some data. Let's go back in time to 1982. While Michael Jackson was thrilling us all on the radio, this group led by Michael Cousins and Lori Mather tested different combinations of local anesthetic in the epidural space. They used 2% lidocaine, half percent bupivacaine, and then varying ratios of the two. Long story short, there was no difference in the latency or onset of the block, but they found that the duration was proportional to the amount of bupi. The more bupi in the mix, the longer the duration. Or, the more lidocaine in the mix, the more the duration suffered. Flash ahead to the 90s now. This group asked the same question we are and found that in a volunteer model, the same relationship was found. Whether they used lidocaine, bupivacaine, or a mixture of both, the onset was the same. But the duration wasn't. Bupivacaine alone was the longest, and the other two were about the same, and significantly shorter. Now, mixing was so commonplace that we got to wondering if this was actually a thing. So, we took 60 patients for shoulder surgery and randomized them to ultrasound-guided interscaling block with MEPI, BUPI, or a one-to-one -one mixture of both in the same syringe. And we found that there was no discernible difference in onset time between groups. Duration was, as you might expect, proportional to the amount of BUPI. The MEPI wore off quickly, the BUPI the longest, and the mixture provided a middle ground duration. I guess that's useful? Maybe? Somehow? Anyway. So then we thought, maybe there's a temporal aspect to this. What if we flood the receptors with the short-acting agent first and then chase it with the longer one? Would that get us the holy grail of blocks? Well, we did that study, also with interscaling, and found that again there was no difference in onset time and we had identical decay curves for duration. No difference compared to the reverse order. Reassuringly, this also exactly matched the duration curve from the previous study with the group that got the mixture. John Lauer and colleagues did a nearly identical study with infraclavicular brachial plexus block. Now, they did find a difference in the beginning of block onset time, three minutes for MEPI and six minutes for the other two groups. Okay, now keep in mind nearly 100% had full sensory block at 15 minutes. And consistent with the earlier studies, we see MEPI wearing off quickly, BUPI lasting the longest, and the middle group was in, well, the middle. Oh, and two patients in the MEPI group needed a rescue block post-op. Just saying. Up to the Roaring Twenties now, similar question with slightly different local anesthetics used for axillary brachial plexus blocks. Shocker, no difference in onset, and the mixture group suffered in duration by 25%. Here's another recent one, again in brachial plexus block. Slightly unusual concentrations, but we do see a difference in the lidocaine alone group. That is, if 13 versus 17 minutes is clinically meaningful to you. Pay attention to the duration though. Same pattern, bupi longest, mixture next, and lidocaine shortest. The veterinarians also think about this and end up getting the same results, whether it's epidurals in cats or wrist blocks in sheep. Yep, you heard that right. In terms of duration, bupi longest, lido shortest, and mixture with an intermediate duration. Now, I could go on, but I think you get the picture. We have consistent findings of no difference in the block latency or onset, and where there is a slight difference, it's of questionable clinical significance. At the same time, adding a short-acting local anesthetic to your bupivacaine just hurts your duration. So why is this commonplace if the data shows it's not useful? Well, for starters, it feels good. 
Intuitively, it sounds logical. Using a bit of both gets you the best of both. We know it's not true, but sometimes in medicine we get biased, say by that one block that failed to set up. And to avoid that embarrassing situation again, we mitigate in a way that feels right. Another factor may be proximity to the nerve. Now, I grew up without ultrasound guidance. Yep, I'm that old. And our block success rate was not 100%. That's changed now, and we can get the local right beside the nerve or plexus. Maybe our onset times are just going to be amazing, no matter which local we use, because in contrast to the old days, we're consistently putting it in the right place. Now, to be fair, here's an example of where there was a difference. This study of bupivacaine alone versus a mixture with Lido in femoral and parasacral sciatic blocks showed a significant difference in onset. Okay. Okay, that's actually good, but the duration predictably suffered too. Maybe there's something about lower limb blocks, the sciatic nerve sheath for one, that changes the pharmacodynamics compared to the brachial plexus. Hard to say, as there aren't many more comparative studies. I'll also point out that these were not ultrasound guided blocks, so take that with a grain of salt. Alright, so moving on from the expediting OR flow, which doesn't seem to be an issue. Mixing two or more local anesthetics together can make the toxicity calculus more complex. We know that last is additive, and it's quite possible that many get lured into a false sense of security by using sub-maximal doses of two different agents while putting the patient at risk with a total dose. There are heaps of reports of toxic events when local anesthetics are mixed. I'm not saying it can't be done safely, but when you add a layer of complexity to a task, the room for error grows. And medication errors remain a substantial proportion of preventable outcomes. The Anesthesia Patient Safety Foundation has pushed for the elimination of provider-prepared medications. Anytime a busy, stressed anesthesiologist is quickly drawing out meds from two different vials, it's only a matter of time before a medication swap is made. You did say you were stressed for time, right? That's why you're trying to shave off two minutes on block onset, right? I thought so. Keeping things standardized and simple reduces the risk of a serious error. I'm a simple guy, and I like to just match my pharmacodynamics to the pain burden. Since the onset doesn't seem to matter, just choose a local that lasts for as long as you want it. By choosing to mix, you're not helping the patient or the surgeon or getting out to the golf course earlier. You're just hampering the sensory block duration and hurting yourself, or, more importantly, the patient. You don't get the best of both worlds, you get the worst. There are some unanswered questions as they relate to ultrasound blocks in the lower limb, but overall, the vast majority of studies agree agree that the myth of combining an intermediate and long-acting agent to leverage the best features of both is busted.